Hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'll be covering a little request that I had on my YouTube channel. And that was how do you uh, change the attributes of your character while you're equipping certain equipment. Okay. And also how do you grant abilities to your character when you have a uh, certain equipment on you, for example, shield or armor. Okay. So I have already prepared a few things in this project, like the user interface and the able system. Okay. I'll go to the setup a little bit later, but just to show what we have over here is we have this character. She's equipping this cone as a weapon. Okay. Not very useful, but uh, it will get the point across. Okay. So if I ch change the equipment, she does this little animation. And then the equipment changes to a sphere. Okay. And if you look at the user interface on the left hand side, you see there's a number written 77. Okay, so this is the attack power of this character right now. So if I attack my character with this, his health is decreased by 77. Okay, and if I restart this, you can see that number is 22 for the cone. And if I attack him with the cone, his attack is uh, damage is 22. Okay, and if I change the equipment once again, okay, the animation is too long. And I attack this right now, so the damage is changed to 77. Okay. Also, we have this, if you are equipping some equipment like this, she does this animation and now I can press the button and have this high jump ability, okay? If I press that button again and so-called remove the equipment, I lose my ability to activate that high jump, okay? So we'll be covering this in this tutorial series, okay? So just to go over the setup, I have imported Paragon Revenant and Paragon Phase, okay? And I also have set up my character as the Phase is the player character and Revenant is the enemy character. I have added the user interface. And uh, for the ability system, what I'm doing is using my plugin. And this is going to be this one, Guess Associate and Guess Associate Helper. And the version right now is version 1.2.2. It's going to be a long time before it gets updated. So, but just should know, okay? And I have set up some inputs over here, okay? And I also want to point out that the attributes of my character right now are health, mana, and attack power, okay? So basically, how you do this is we'll create an other ability, a cube weapon that's going to do some damage to this character that's different from the sphere and the, uh, what's it, uh, cone, okay? So we're going to my abilities folder, create a new folder and call this the cube okay and we're going to create a new grouping class of the game ability okay and it's going to be this one and if you're not using the plugin and have your own game level system you can just use this base class okay and call this ga equipped uh, and cube okay so open this up and what you want to do is just simply say play montage and wait. Now this could be like your weapon switching montage. So I don't have that. I'll be using the one that I already have this. Okay. And just after the animation, what you could do is say apply gameplay effect to owner. Okay. Now you could also do this on the that uh, wait target data, uh, wait uh, event data. Gameplay event. Uh, wait, gameplay with this one. Okay, so you can trigger this event from inside of your animation to apply this gameplay effect and some of the things. But just to keep this simple, I won't be using this. After the animation is completed or blended out or interrupted or cancelled, I just apply this gameplay effect. Okay, and for the actual weapon switching, what I'm doing is say get running actor from actor info and check for our interface. Event interface. So you could also use this cast too, but uh, they are really not efficient to use. You can use them for prototyping, but just don't use them for performance reasons. Use these interface calls, they are much better. So I'm going to just check this. If we are doing this, I'm going to call that event. And we're going to create that event. I already have uh, created two events for the cone and the sphere. So going to my interfaces folder 
And by the way, just create an interface by going to this blueprints and selecting this blueprint interface. Okay. So I have already created this player interface. You can see we have a good sphere and a good cone. Okay, so I'm going to add a new function and call this equipped uh, cube. Okay, it's uh, not going to take any inputs or outputs, just like this. Okay, compile and save this. And going back, we drag out from here and say equipped cube. Okay, and once we are done, I'm going to just say and ability. Okay, so this is done. Now we need to do two things. We need to create this gameplay effect, uh, this one, and this also needs to be set. Okay, it's going to be player interface. We need to create this gameplay effect, and we also need to implement this event inside of our tractor. Okay, so first we can create this gameplay effect and go into my EQ folder, create a new blueprint class of the type gameplay effect. Okay, and it's going to be G underscore equipped U. Okay, and basically what this is going to do is just modify my attack power. Okay, just select your attack power and it's going to override this instead of adding this is, and let's just say it's going to be 15. So it decreases like half the health of the enemy. Okay, and I'm going to use this inside of this. Just select this and do it like this. Okay. So this is done and going to our tractor class, we need to implement this equipped cube. So over here I have implemented this equipped cone and sphere. So what I'm doing is say equipped cube. Okay, and this is also present over here. So the interface is added to this class settings and I'm going to this implement interface and just select this add interface, okay. And what I've done over here, if you look at the viewport, I have this static mesh component over here that's going to hold my weapon mesh, okay? And this is going to be changed based on the ability that I activated or the weapon that I want to equip, okay? And we have this weapon damage overlap, okay? Nothing fancy about this. You can have this customized for your own weapon, okay? So the, uh, the way I'm changing this weapon is I am using this weapon array that's going to hold all of the weapons that I have for this structure. So right now I have this cone and cube and cone and sphere. So I'm going to add a new one and this is going to be cube. This one, okay, compile and save this and going to our event graph. I am going to use this same weapon array and I'm say get, okay, and it's going to index two. So the index is like zero, one, two, okay? And I'm going to drag this weapon over here and say set static mesh, okay? Like so, and this is going to be my new mesh and I am going to just print this as Q, okay? So we know we have equipped our Q. Now really you can just instead of using a static mesh, you can have your own weapon-based blueprints over here that you can set up to your character and whatnot, like have this array of actors and you have, can have your weapon actors inside of this, okay? So you're not limited to the static meshes per se, okay? And next what I will do is grant my ability to the character so that we can equip our cube. And by the way, if you don't see this, just go to this and select this show inherited variables, okay? I am going to add this g underscore Equipped Q, okay. And I also need to set up an input for this. So going to my, uh, where is it? This one, input. I'm going to define a new. And it's going to be equipped uh, three. And this is going to be on my four key because three is already bound, okay. So going to our character and I have defined my inputs over here. It's just simple calls to the try activate ability. So we need to do this and call this equipped uh, three. Okay. And just search for try activate ability by class. Okay. And it's going to be equipped Q. Okay. 
So we have granted our ability and we have created our ability. So let's go ahead and test it out. Okay. So if I press my four key, we equip three key, she does that animation and it's long. Okay. So we have our cube and our attack power is 50. So if attack him, it's half damage. Attack again, it's 100% damage. Okay. So this is the way that you um, change your attribute based on your equipment. Now, an ability can be anything. You need to understand this. Like jumping could be an ability. Changing weapon could be an ability. So this is the way that we are handling the attribute modification based on the abilities. You could uh, directly apply this gameplay effect to the owner when you are changing the ability. But uh, think of this like this gameplay ability is a self-contained thing, a function, you could say. Not really a function, but just for the instance, say, think of it as like function. That it contains the animation, the weapon mesh over here, and the damage amount that's going to be given to the weapon by the to the character by the weapon. Okay. So you can use capabilities like these to change your attributes. Okay. Next, we want to see is that if I uh, pick up an equipment or just change my equipment. Equipment. I uh, I am I am granted some ability, and if I remove that equipment, and that ability is taken away from me. So the way I have done is that on the key press I have done this, but you could do this on some object that is placed in the world, like you overlap this and you trigger this event. But I have done this on key press. Okay. So once I press the key, I activate an ability, and if I press the key again, I deactivate activate another ability. So we're going to take a look at these abilities. So inside of give ability, what I'm really doing is just checking to see if the player implements this interface and play the animation and just call this interface function. And similarly, inside of the remove ability, I am just checking for the interface, playing the animation and calling this event. Okay. So the way this is implemented inside of the character is over here. The ability that I want to give, if you remember, we created these functions inside of our tutorial for the gameplay abilities. So we have these functions, uh, remove ability with tag and initialize ability. Okay. So the initialize ability gives the ability to the ability system component. Okay. And the remove ability with tags removes that ability there's matches this tag present on this ability system component. Okay. So really once I activate that ability, I just grant some sort of ability to the character. And when I call the remove ability, I just remove that, search for that tag on the ability system component and remove that ability. And the actual ability that I grant is shown over here in this give ability. This is GA high jump. And this is just like a dummy ability that I created fairly quickly to move the character in the upper direction by 500 units, okay? So the workflow is that when I press the key over here, I activate this uh, give ability. Over here, I just call this interface call give ability and back in the character class, this give ability is executed on the server and calls this initialize ability and grants the ability to this character to be able to make high jumps. And similarly, once you remove the equipment by pressing the button, I call that removability function, and I pass on the tag to remove the ability to this interface call. And back in the character, I just remove this ability by searching, calling this removability with tag and searching the ability system component for the matching ability. Okay. And just one thing to note is that for the high jump ability that I've granted to the character, I have set up this tag for this character dot ability dot high jump. Okay. So you need to specify this tag to be able to remove it from your character by calling this function. Okay, just be careful of this. Okay, so I hope this clarifies the request that was made. And if you still have questions, don't hesitate to contact me on Discord. I'll try to help as much as I can. And if you have any other requests for this specific gameplay system, uh, just keep them easy. I really don't like doing difficult stuff. so. Yeah, this is it for this video. Thank you very much.